deliberate, deliberate and act on an MOU for county regional <coughs> SWCD groundwater initiative, Colfax, Harding, Mora, and Union counties. Mayor and Commission, um, the agreement that you have uh, has been an ongoing uh, uh, planning issue. There's been a separate planning issue in Union County. There's been an initiative to have a groundwater analysis done in Colfax County, and you see where this is going, that it really turned into a, a regional initiative. Um, the city of Raton has been represented in a series of meetings by Mr. Campbell, and Mr. Campbell, I don't know if I can call on you to update the commission on how this process is, has gone and uh, what we see in the, uh, in the proposed MOU. I would just note that we would ask them to change the village of Raton to, to the city. city. Mm -hmm. Dear Mayor and Commissioners, uh, this has been an ongoing process that started primarily about Colfax County. Uh, Colfax County has got a history of not having very much groundwater. There's a few pockets on the edge like Capulin. Maxwell was one of them, but uh, typically that is exactly why most of the communities in this county are on surface water. This is a larger area. They're trying to go to the state engineer's office. I believe that the last groundwater study in Colfax County was in the 1930s. Uh, hasn't been undertaken since. With today's technology, look at it. Probably will be some brackish water there. The question on a lot of that's going to be just how brackish is it is to where treatment is quite expensive. Uh, current drought, as we all heard, along the California coast, some other places they are treating salt water, but uh, does come at quite a cost. Some of that will be looked at. This actually doesn't require any financial commitment, just to support from the city as they move forward with this. Raton has been dedicated to study this at length as a surface water community. Uh, we've got two pristine sources we do it from, but at the same time, this is a big issue to the county in the northeast corner, and this would help to, to find what is down there. This would be a long-term process to try to move forward with this because it takes quite a bit of documentation <coughs> and study, especially when you get into some sampling of what quality of water is there and what quantity. Some of it has to do with aging that water. How quick does it replenish? That's a big issue right now is as you raise groundwater and pump it out, are you overdrawing what's in place? A lot of that's going on along the panhandle as we speak. Uh, those are a lot of the issues that this will help bring to light in this area. Uh, they're actually asking for our support. As we move forward with this, some in-kind services, we do have some expertise, uh, some water testing issues that we could probably assist with as this moves forward. <coughs> Thank you. Anybody have any questions for Dan? Okay. All right. May I make a motion that we approve the memorandum of understanding for the four county regional SWCDS groundwater initiative? Oh, I'll second. We have a motion and a second to approve this memorandum of understanding for four county regional SWCD groundwater initiative, Colfax, Harding, Mora, and Union counties. <coughs> Uh, my only problem with this is number five under administration. At this time, they're not asking for any fiscal or fund obligations, and we're not uh, giving them any by signing this document. But it goes on to say, at such time, we could become financially responsible. Um, you know, I don't know how anybody else feels about that. I do think it would be show up a, a strong support if they're going to the uh, state engineering office, if everybody's in agreement. Well, they can, they're also saying these uh, endeavors would be outlined as separate agreements. And yeah, it would be a separate so agreement. I think at that time we could make a decision. We can then. address it then. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. We have a mo like I said, we had a motion and a second. Can we have a roll call vote, please? Commissioner Chavez. Yes. Commissioner Schuster? Yes. Commissioner Jockman? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Sagata? Yes. Mayor Mance? Yes. Deliberate and act on award of agreement for scrap tire tipping. Mayor and Commission, uh, mm -hmm. uh, look at ahead a little E and F. <coughs> have to do with two components of, of uh, right. scrap tire handling in the city of Raton. Uh, this mm -hmm. item has to do with tipping. And the next item we're going to talk about transportation, two separate issues. Um, well, two separate vendors, not two separate issues, but 
Um, I would state that uh, I think uh, many of you commissioners have seen that we have uh, a, a large pile of scrap tires at the at the uh, current convenience center, and this is a goal of getting rid of all of the scrap tires. We would also evaluate uh, our role in uh, in the future in handling those scrap tires. So uh, Jason Phillips, the solid waste manager of City of Raton, has put a lot of time into items E and F. And uh, if I could call on Jason to come forward and uh, update the commission on uh, costs, uh, grant funding, and answer any of your questions on this item. Go ahead, Mr. Mayor, Commission, uh, what we've got is project number NMED 15-01. That's a tire recycling grant through the RAID process of NMED. As uh, Mr. Scott alluded to, it is scheduled to expire at the beginning of the next fiscal year. What we've put together here with uh, the help of Tim Gray from the Environment Department, they had requested a written quote process because our total funds expended are under the $60,000 combined. So we did two separate re requests for written quotes. Uh, the grant is for tire recycling. So a, a lot of facilities will monofill tires. Those wouldn't be eligible for this process. So as you can see in your packet, we requested prices from GeoCycle. They're based out of Colorado Springs, Colorado, Oklahoma Tire Recyclers, as well as State Rubber and Environmental Solutions. And they're out of Denver City, Texas. Each one has a little different end product. GeoCycle submitted the low quote, $55 a ton, and the recyclable method of, that GeoCycle does is they shred tires, they take them to a plant in Florence, Colorado, they mix them with 70% coal, 30% tires, and they fire a cement kiln with them. So that is a little different than what State Rubber or one of these other recyclers would do where they create a crumb rubber product that there's a back sale market for. So we did get confirmation from the Environment Department that Tire Drive Fuel or TDF is an acceptable way to expend the grant funds and they have concurred that it is. So our first item would be a recommendation that we award a contract to GeoCycle at the submitted price of $55 per ton for tipping fees. On the back side of that, generally when you're dealing with transportation and tipping fees, it's the lowest net to the city. Uh, obviously, GeoCycle has the lowest price, and the other facilities are much farther away, so we receive concurrence to not even bother getting a transportation cost to Denver City, which is four times farther. Okay. So we did receive four prices for the next item. Yeah. They're broke down into the per trip price, really competitive in the transportation and trucking usually is. Uh, the low quota on that item is Interwest LLC at 590 a trip with an estimated 30 trips. The tire weights are relative and a little approximate based upon the composition of each bale, but we'd estimate 30 trips with an average of 22 bales per trip somewhere between 22 and 24. We believe with the available grant funds that we will be able to remove all tire bells from the site and we may be able to get rid of some of the loose tires that we have as well. So at this point, I would uh, entertain any questions, but my recommendation would be that we approve each vendor for the next two items as the low quotes. Okay. I have a question for you, <coughs> yes, Mr. Sir. Phillips. On the transportation services, uh, the transportation cost, what does it cost us per load, generally, to transport these? The, the transportation, the estimated quantity of 30 on that is a per trip price, so that is your per load. So it's 590. As a rule of thumb, it's somewhere in the neighborhood of four dollars a loaded mile, which is one-way haul. Uh, it's fairly comparable to what we're paying to transport trash a similar distance. Uh, another caveat of, the, of this process is scrap tires are are kind of a nuisance in the world for environment departments, mm -hmm. and you require a certain certification to be able to haul those. So as part of this, I verified that our low quota that, that I, we've recommended award to does possess a New Mexico scrap tire hauler certificate. Thank you. I'll make a motion to award the agreement for the scrap uh, tire tipping. You undo them both together? Uh, 
you like to. Yes, also, please. I make a motion to accept the award for the agreement for the scrap tire transportation. Okay, I have a second that. Um, we have a motion and a second to award the tipping fee contract to Geo Cycle for $55 per ton and an award Intrawest LLC the uh, transportation contract at $590 a load. I guess that's not a load, yes. a load. Can we have a roll call vote? Commissioner Giacomo? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Savelda? Yes. Commissioner Chavez? Yes. Commissioner Schuster? Yes. Mayor Mance? Yes. And thanks for your work. Thank you. Our next item of business is deliberate an act on closing agreement accepting educational building located at 100 South 1st Street. We just received the uh, agreement from the attorney and I would like to postpone this until we actually had a time for each of us to read this. Uh, I need a motion and a second. Make a motion to that effect, please. Second. Thank you. We have a motion and a and a second to postpone the um, deliberation and acting on this closing agreement until the next commission meeting. That's acceptable with everyone. <coughs> All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Deliberate and act on the purchase of fencing material to replace on Gardner Road right away. Mayor and Commission, to reflect back to our uh, last meeting, we did have uh, mm -hmm. some members of uh, the uh, Raton High School uh, uh, FFA mm -hmm. present, and they asked you to consider a cautionary arrangement where mm -hmm. they would replace uh, fencing on the Gardner Road or Red River Road mm -hmm. right away. Uh, they, their proposal was they would provide the labor if the city would purchase materials consisting of steel fence posts and, and uh, uh, barbed wire for that project. So we have obtained uh, some pricing from local vendors. The quantities are estimated. Uh, I would tell you that we did get the, uh, a, a bid in earlier today, or a, or a written quotation actually. So you can see that uh, we're talking about around $750 uh, because we need to really refine those quantities, I would ask for uh, a little flexibility on uh, that expense if uh, the commission would like to uh, uh, authorize that. Uh, we are fencing city right of way. I would suggest that we uh, pay for this out of the gas tax for street improvements. Mayor, I make a motion that we accept the low bid for the materials to build the fence. Second. Uh, what are we looking at for low bid? Who's the? Uh, it's still Rat Tone Builder okay, Supply. Okay. okay. Actually, it looked like uh, we did get a, a price in from uh, BTU Building Materials that, uh, uh, in general, if we accept the quantities that we have, there's a, a little bit lower. Okay, so it doesn't include the gro gross receipts. Is that what this one does not include the gross receipts? Right. Okay, and so we would not consider that in order. You know, right. So that makes the pricing, the, the quote from BTU right. lower. But you'll come back to us with the proper the amount of, of everything. What we're asking for, Commissioner, is that uh, we would get your authorization to purchase the materials, like we say the exact quantities of this uh, are going to be plus and minus, but we would ask you to to uh, authorize about $800 worth of material purchases. Agree with Neil's motion? Yeah. Second. Would you restate the sure. motion? <laughs> uh, make a motion that we approve the purchase of supplies to complete this project in the estimated realm of $800 or so. Okay. 
You want to second that again? I'll second that motion. Thank you. Uh, we have a motion and a second to approve the purchase of fencing material in the amount not to exceed $850. Roll call vote. Mayor Pro Tem Sagata? Yes. Commissioner Giacomo? Yes. Commissioner Schuster? Yes. Commissioner Chavez? Yes. Mayor Mance? Yes. Motion passes. Deliberate in 2015 11, approval of an economic development strategy plan. Mr. Jenkins? Mayor and Commissioners, this economic development strategic plan has been over a year in the making. It represents the input of some 65 citizens, two public meetings, uh, scrutiny by a group of um, what we call the Blue Ribbon Economic Development Committee, as well as a presentation uh, through the city manager to the various department heads to make sure that what we came up with was something that was not only workable, but desirable. Uh, I can't tell you how proud I am of the work that these people did, and I think that you will find that uh, the goals are achievable, they're specific, uh, we have initiatives listed under each goal, we have timelines and measurables, and uh, this is a plan that should not end up sitting on anybody's uh, desk. We have not anticipated any money from the city in terms of achieving these goals. The extent to which we can get the community involved is going to determine the extent to which we're able to implement this plan. And we, as uh, uh, members of, of this group, have each committed ourselves to be a part of that process. Uh, this was not a Grover Tone effort alone. We've Grover Tone facilitated this process and has taken responsibility in many cases to go ahead and recruit people under uh, the recommended champions. In other cases, we have stated uh, uh, who we think would be the best possible champion for this, but without committing them to that. The last thing I'd like to say is that uh, in setting these goals, it's our hope to present to the public uh, and to prospective site selectors, uh, prospective uh, businesses that might consider relocating to return, that we are committed to economic development, that we have a plan for the future growth of our city, and that uh, we're moving ahead. And I ask for your positive vote in ex adopting this plan. Uh, when I first read your vision statement and it said that it was anchored by the Palace Hotel, I kind of was taken <coughs> back. But also on page 16, you're talking about the reopening of the Palace Hotel. And so I'm making an assumption. That's why you made that thing. The vision answer. statement is for the year 2020, mm -hmm. and we envision that within the next five years, uh, either uh, the current owner, who has invested quite a bit of money in revitalizing that structure, or a subsequent developer who might want to uh, make the Palace Hotel as part of a larger investment in the First Street complex, uh, would uh, work with us to achieve our goal of having a, a revitalized down, downtown First Street area with the Palace Hotel as a major feature. Uh, the other thing is, um, of course, it's recommended, so that's okay. Uh, when I was reading the things that you wanted the Public Works Department to champion, uh, my only question was, I don't know if we have enough people in Public Works to be able to take on this project, but since it's recommended, uh, it could be changed. Yeah, Madam Mayor, my only comments would be mm -hmm. uh, what differs in this plan from the previous one we approved? We have never adopted a specific economic development plan, to my knowledge, at least not since 2005. 20,000 in 2012, I thought we did. I don't think it was approved. It was just uh, presented. But we'd have to go back and Many of the things that are in here uh, represent 
suggestions that came out of that 2012 effort. And uh, that process, while I think a good starting point was not adequate to produce the type of plan that we have here, and uh, it did not achieve the type of involvement as far as other citizens beyond the, uh, the city employees and the, and the uh, managers. And here we have a plan that hopefully the entire community will get behind. Who will be responsible for monitoring that these uh, goals are being met? I think that the uh, adopted champion, as opposed to the recommended champion, the one who finally accepts responsibility, will be saying as a part of that commitment that they will be uh, looking at the milestones that uh, we want to achieve and the date and timing and be in a position to report back to the Blue Ribbon Committee and eventually to the Commission on the progress that's being made. Who, uh, who is the Blue Ribbon Committee and what, what are they part of? They were a group of among the, the many participants uh, I don't have the list with me exactly, and I hesitate to try to name them all. Uh, Bill Allen, uh, Jose so there, there, it's a group within the Bill uh, Ray No. No? This was a group that uh, expressed interest in fine-tuning uh, the work that had been done through the two uh, committees. It was uh, represented the business community. We had two of the uh, pastors uh, were a part of it, Tim Sexton, Reverend Sexton, and Reverend Adrian Coleman. Uh, we had Paul Kassler on the group, uh, and we had uh, Jose Archuleta was a, was a member of that group. Uh, I apologize to any of the other members if I'm not recalling all names. There were about 15 people involved okay. in that Blue Ribbon Committee. And, and you've had discussions with all the recommended champions, and, and you have agreements to, to participate? No. The recommended champions are just that. It'll be up to uh, the Grow Raton as the facilitator for this project to uh, see if we can get those commitments, and if not, to recruit somebody else. Um, I will say that the plan in its various evolutions has gone to not only members of the city commission, but also to uh, department heads and city manager. and. Uh, we feel confident that if there were a major objection, it would have come to at this point. I know we've talked to the Chamber of Commerce about their role in this, and I've uh, presented the information to not only Diana Sanchez, or President of Main Street, but also to Brenda Ferry, their executive director. And that might be a good uh, place for me to make a comment here. Um, I have uh, looked this over for a while now in, in with the intent of having it dovetail to what the city does, what the city is capable of doing, what the city would, would be uh, planning on doing. And I think that we have, have done that and I, I had a number of communications with Mr. Jenkins and then he's passed that along to the group and there's been modifications made to the plan uh, a number of times. Uh, so. There, there's been quite a bit of that. I feel pretty comfortable that the plan does dovetail to, uh, you know, what what we would plan to do, what we can do, and what we are required to do. And so uh, it, I, it comes to you now with uh, really uh, my endorsement and the staff that we have worked on this over a period of time. Uh, yeah, I, I knew you had been working uh, mm -hmm. together on this. Um, but I noticed reading through it earlier today that there were a lot of, um, you know, a lot of champions that, you know, I'm hoping that you've had at least some communication with. That. As I said before, in the process, the evolution of the plan, we made every effort to distribute to the, the people who would be affected by it. Uh, we think that uh, effective communication is going to be the key to make it successful, but also, as we said before, I said before, uh, we're not asking for the city to provide any financial support to this, except perhaps for uh, the time that their city uh, employees might be involved in uh, dealing with certain things. The success 
of this program is going to depend upon the community embracing it and stepping forward. And we're hoping that your approval of the plan will be a unifying force within the community so that we will truly have uh, a concerted community effort to develop our economy. Well, it definitely takes uh, city and community. Definitely. Yeah, it takes all of us. <laughs> and a lot of good communication, so. Any other questions? I'll make a motion, Madam Mayor, that uh, resolution number 2015-11, the City of Raton adopt an economic development strategic plan for the fiscal year 2015 through 2020. I'll second. We have a motion and a second to adopt resolution 2015-11. Approval of an economic development strategic plan. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Deliberate and act on street improvements from state purchasing agreements. Uh, application of surface treatment aggregates, um, asphalt emulsions, and crack sealing hot mix pavement. Mayor and Commission, I know that that is a, a mouthful, and I'll kind of start with the uh, report that you have in your packet here. And uh, uh, the bottom line is we have a long way to go on improving our streets. Um, you know, we have a long way to go on all of our infrastructure, um, but we have seen uh, uh, an impact from the snow that we got over the winter uh, with the streets. Um, our public works crew has really dedicated a lot of time to getting out there and patching potholes, but there's a lot of them out there. And I think it kind of underlines that uh, we're behind on uh, really the <coughs> maintenance of these streets. So uh, we've kind of gone through with you what the resources we have uh, in hand, what's available. And um, I, I guess the bottom line is that we do have some money accrued in the general fund, $189,000 that we would like to put to work on these streets uh, as soon as possible. And then we do uh, receive gas tax, which goes into a special, uh, goes into special revenue fund 217. And uh, one of the strategies there is that we could use those funds to leverage uh, grant funds. And uh, so you see that we have some cooperative agreement projects scheduled. We have those grant agreements in hand, some municipal arterial program uh, projects, um, and that's generally where the uh, special revenue fund gas tax would go, is to leveraging those kind of programs. So uh, our, our recommendation to the commission is that we get, uh, we use the $189,000 that is in the general fund um, to try to get a, as big an impact as we can on streets. And so you can go to any part of town and you can see needs for streets. Uh, you can see needs for uh, drainage. And I think that it's a long conversation on how we do this, but uh, I'll kind of get to the bottom line of that, that I, I do believe that we have to have a consistent program every year of uh, attacking these. We're not going to go out and correct all our street pro uh, problems in one year and then have the luxury of, of not thinking about that for the next couple of years. So what we're trying to do here, and uh, one of the conclusions hopefully you get from the report, is that we have a sub sustainable uh, street improvement program, and, and we're going to have to work on it year after year, and we're not going to get them all done in a short amount of time. Um, so with that in mind, a recommendation that I would like to bring to the commission is that we look at the avenues in the Maxwell South Edition. And from uh, my evaluation of streets, these streets are, uh, of all the streets that we have that have needs, these streets are especially in poor condition. So let's talk about where the Maxwell South Edition is located. That's the subdivision that's generally west of uh, the Little League baseball field, the, the high school football field. Uh, the, the soccer complex, mm -hmm. those avenues that go up to, to the old MCMC long-term hospital. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about 9th Avenue, 10th, 11th, 12th, 
13th and 14th Avenue. And what we're recommending to you is that the way that we would be able to have some improvement, some meaningful improvement uh, in that with the budget that we have is we're evaluating a chip seal surfacing on those streets. Now, if we had the money, we would rebuild those streets. They're uh, at that point where it would be justified that we simply removed them and reconstructed them. We don't have anywhere close to that kind of budget. So we're recommending that we chip seal those avenues so that we're doing something. And we would, rec we would uh, tell you that that would extend the life of these streets seven to eight years. And we would look at uh, uh, construction methods like chip seal as we go forward on other streets that uh, in an ideal world we would rebuild them, but we just don't have that kind of budget. Uh, so. Um, you see some of the numbers there. We would uh, propose doing uh, resurfacing 16 blocks on those avenues, uh, and we would estimate that the cost is uh, around $100,000. And with the $100,000, that gives us a little bit of contingency in there. Now, um, on Chip Seal, the work uh, is available on a state purchasing agreement, and so the state has bid that work and we can use those those prices uh, so we reference a state purchase agreement and so we would not bring you a sealed bid we would ask you to uh, approve a purchase order and we'll just purchase off of that state purchasing agreement for chip seal work also the the asphalt material that we use in that process the asphalt emulsion is also available on a, on a state purchasing agreement so we'd procure off of that as well. We'd issue a separate PO mm -hmm. to a separate vendor for that. So we've talked to those vendors. Um, there is some work that would be, they would be in Las Vegas, and we would pay mobilization for them to come to Raton from Las Vegas when they're doing work it's there. Much better than okay. Mm -hmm. So the one thing that's, mm -hmm. that's not <coughs> under a state purchasing agreement mm -hmm. is the rock, is the aggregate. Mm -hmm. And for chip seal, it's mm -hmm. a special gradation. It has to be a very clean rock. And we'll have to go out and get prices on that and bring that back to the commission uh, if you like this concept of chip sealing those. But uh, we're doing 18,000 square yards, 16 blocks uh, for about $100,000. That's getting a, a, a lot of bang for the buck. It's not rebuilding the streets. Yeah. It's not a new street. What we would have to do is, uh, with our crew, make sure all of the patching is done. Any potholes that are there, we'll have to fix those. Uh, it'll have to be very clean, and, and then the contractor uh, will come in and, and do the work. The work would consist of spread the asphalt emulsion, we put the aggregate down over it, they roll it, they sweep it, and then they fog seal it, which is uh, a layer of asphalt sprayed on top of, of the uh, aggregate. So uh, there are probably a couple of methods we could we could talk about on on these avenues. We would probably bring additional methods to you in the future, but uh, I feel confident in this uh, chip seal recommendation. Um, we would also uh, ask you to approve uh, crack sealing. Uh, purchase. That crack ceiling is also on a state contract. Um, it, it looks to me like we would put down a minimum of 10 tons of the crack ceiling material and if we uh, take the price on that contract that brings us to $17,500. And where we would want to use crack ceiling is on streets that we've paved within the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. Because if you look at Grant Avenue, it's probably there about 10 years old and you start to see these random cracks in there and what happens is uh, uh, moisture from snow or rainfall right. gets down to the base and that's where we start to see those streets falling apart. If we can keep those sealed up, we can uh, really increase the life of those streets. So uh, we may not get all of them done uh, that we've paved within the last 10 years. Grant is definitely the top one on the list. We also would look at, at Jones Street, Cedar Street, and uh, some of the streets around uh, the Romero Park area that were done maybe about four or five years ago. Mm -hmm. We'll go as far as this 
$17,500 will take us. And when we get to that point, we'll stop and we'll come back next year and do some more crack sealing. Crack sealing should be a part of a regular street maintenance program. And you see that on the highway, you see crews out crack sealing all the time and you just do some every year. So that's what we're recommending to you here. Now on those three procurements, again, state uh, purchasing agreements, what we're proposing, we're just asking you to uh, authorize us to issue a purchase order to those vendors and we'll get that work going. Now, uh, in the report, we also do a summary of, of those costs uh, plus uh, some additional work. So you can see that we have a match on our co-op agreement projects and we're proposing to do a full reconstruction of two blocks of Pecos Avenue. That would be 1st Street to 3rd Street. Um, if the bids come in within the funds that we have here and one block of Galisteo Avenue, that would be from 1st Street to 2nd Street. You can see our match there. Uh, we have a match on uh, the Tiger Drive project. And uh, um, we would propose taking this out of the 189,000. Now on six, where you see uh, there is no match, there's no city funds in that, that's an error, my error, it's not Tiger Drive, that's First Street project, mm -hmm. not Tiger Drive. So we've got a lot of questions on Tiger Drive because Tiger Drive is in especially uh, poor condition after the winter. So what we're proposing to do on Tiger Drive is uh, resurface the street on the west side of the railroad <coughs> tracks. Uh, that kind of matches with the money that we have here, $193,000. And then on the east side, we'd have to go uh, find additional funding to do that. And I think that's, we try to patch that and then go into next year and find a way to do that one. Uh, so now if, uh, if the capital outlay came through, and you know there was some money for Ratone Streets and Capital Outlay. If that happened, this would be one that we would probably look at. But it is a good candidate for the MAP program. So what we would be able to complete, and and this is new resurfacing. This is milling off a couple inches of existing asphalt and and repaving that would be from uh, the railroad tracks going west, uh, really towards the Soy Building. Mm -hmm. We would we would complete that part of uh, Tiger Drive. Um, lastly, we did ask the Department of Transportation for a donation of asphalt millings. And uh, that's item number seven there. They did grant uh, that. They said they would give us 500 cubic yards of millings. And what we would have to do is they're stockpiled on I-25, this side of Three Mile Bridge, we'd have to have our contractor go out, load them, haul them, take them to the place that we want to use them, put them in a windrow. We'd have a, a contractor again grade them and compact those. So we put a, established a budget of ten thousand dollars to do that work. And where we use those is on secondary streets um, as some kind of surfacing where we would not otherwise be able to surface uh, a street. So uh, I would. Tell you, there's probably a couple of places we could go with it, but what we're looking at is the part of Roundhouse Road that we have not been able to otherwise pave. Mm -hmm. So uh, we would look at, at doing that, and uh, the ten thousand dollars is kind of an approximate price on getting that done. So you can see that we wind up. Our proposal is that. Uh, uh, with these, we'd spend a little over two hundred thousand dollars. We would spend all of that one eighty nine, and then we go to the uh, gas tax uh, for the additional money. That's the work that we would get done. Uh, we have some other street improvements that we'd like to bring to you, but it would be on a smaller scale, and we would, you know, have the gas tax left to go forward doing that. And you see the amount uh, in gas tax right now. So if we get your approval on that plan. That leaves us about 260000 in gas tax. And what we see is roughly about $12,000 a month coming into that. Now, I would tell you that the legislature did approve a two cent additional gas tax for municipalities. You could choose to implement that two cents uh, 
and it would be on sales of gasoline within the within the city limits. The downside to that is the state doesn't collect that for us. We would have to set up a program to collect that two cents and do all of the administration on it. So we're going to look at you know what revenues uh, there might be versus what the cost of administration would be on that. The only similar thing to that is lodger's tax and uh, we do have a program to collect lodger's tax. The state does not collect that. All other uh, taxes really I think the state collects and then they send us our share but uh, the similar thing is uh, lodger's tax. Now there has been a, a, a capability of a municipality doing that for a long time. Nobody has done that. Implemented a a local option on gas tax and then gone out to collect it. Nobody has done that. But uh, the legislature did uh, pass something this year that you could look at. And I'll hold up for questions right there. So for three up to seven, we have to go out for bid? Only one and two were incorporated into the state. That's correct, Mayor. Scott, have you had a chance to see what kind of practicing work these guys do? Because, you know, we've both seen bad practicing. We've seen real good practicing. The contractor is a company called Dismuke. We're really familiar with them. Chip sealing. And uh, they've done a lot of crack sealing in the area. And uh, yeah, they're they're very qualified yeah. to do it. Yeah. I have no reservation about, uh, uh, you know, Same ordering with the, the work from Dismuke. Uh, on the chip seal, uh, we're very familiar with the asphalt vendor. Uh, this is not, uh, this is a polymerized asphalt. It's really a uh, an excellent product. It's much better than, than the asphalt, the liquid asphalt that goes in hot mix mm -hmm. pavement. Uh, it, it, it's really good and this Holly Frontier is a really good vendor. Uh, the city in the past has done a lot of chip seal and, and this is the vendor that sells that that polymerized emulsion. Uh, blue collar construction we would look at for the work. Uh, not familiar with them. I don't know them. We've talked to them but uh, not familiar with their work. Any other questions? I like the idea of an ongoing plan that, that you're proposing to keep our streets. And by all means, the streets, the avenues from 9th to 14th, uh, every time it rains, and even when there's uh, games going on down there, you know, the they're just you have to send a street sweeper and a crew in there to just pick up the asphalt that is washed down right. to it. So. Mm -hmm. But it's a very good program, I believe, to continue it annually. Now, I'd point out that we're not doing the streets, uh, 3rd, 4th, 5th, or 6th Street. It's you the know, 16 blocks is, yeah. is the avenues. And, and I think they're in bad shape, but the streets themselves are, you know, decent. And, and probably it's, it's been 15 years ago that there was a rebuild of 4th Street. And so those are, those are decent. When you get around the football field, 3rd Street has uh, got some trouble. 6th Street has some trouble. We'd like to do those, but uh, uh, we we really want to focus on these avenues. Well, I'll move that we uh, accept the proposed uh, street project. Okay. I'll second that. <clears throat> we have a motion and a second uh, to act on the street improvement for state purchasing agreements application of surface treatment. Can we have a roll call vote, please? Commissioner Schuster? Yes. Commissioner Giacomo? Yes. Commissioner Chavez? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Scala? Yes. Mayor Mintz? Yes. Motion passes. Lita Ordinance. Mayor and Commission, in your uh, packet, do you have a draft of an update to the Local Economic Development Act ordinance? 
And uh, there, what's driving the update here is that there's been uh, revisions in the state statute. Um, and as you see from the opening statement, uh, that this would allow us to uh, add businesses to the definition of qualified entity uh, that uh, would actually add some uh, uh, retail sales type of businesses. You can see that the, the uh, draft, and this is right out of state statute, uh, does take into uh, account uh, the arts and cultural district, cultural facilities, economic development project definition. And so the, uh, the text in red would be the change from the existing ordinance, uh, and in some cases we're striking out existing provisions and proposing to take that out. We do have Mr. Hegeman, Tim Hegeman, uh, from uh, the State Economic Development on hand. He had, had helped us, given us a lot of assistance in, in uh, bringing this ordinance update to the commission. I would note that this is an introduction of an ordinance and it would take us several meetings to get to the final action. Um, now, one thing I would point out to the commission is that uh, the existing ordinance uh, has a provision for a Raton Economic Development Board. Uh, Mr. Hegeman had provided a recommendation to you that would change uh, that makeup of the Economic Development Board. Uh, the task of the Economic Development Board would be uh, reviewing and making recommendations to you, the governing body, on applications for industrial revenue bonds. Um, or reviewing and making recommendations on applications for assistance for economic development projects. So you can see that currently it provides for an economic development board that is primarily staff. And uh, I would say that the benefit to that is um, we may talk to an econo economic development prospect that wants to know what's the availability of utilities, what's the availability of water, can we hook to the wastewater system, um, what's the cost of electricity in Raton. So it's it's valuable to, to have those uh, staff members uh, involved in the process, but I think that that's something that we want to have a discussion on uh, going forward because we recognize that in economic development, uh, the city of Raton has a responsibility for economic development, but um, we are not the uh, sole entity or there it takes the involvement of the community as we said under the strategic plan it takes really a lot of involvement of the community to be successful and so we're a partner with a lot of other parties in the, in the realm of economic development and what we've stated is it really depends on uh, what specific uh, economic development you, you target and uh, as to what kind of partners might bring uh, you know, health information. Uh, so there, there's a discussion there on what we want to have in the ordinance. Uh, right now, currently, I think that we we try to partner up with uh, uh, entities or individuals in the community that, that bring something spe to a specific discussion. I make a motion that we act on the on the introduction of the uh, code ordinance for the planning and development. Uh, the lead out on the lead out order, ordinance. Do we? I don't believe we need to take any action. It's just an introduction. Yes, yeah, this is direction. just an introduction. Mm -hmm. right? yeah. well, we have we have to do we have uh, public meetings in 30 days to which to post this. And, mm -hmm. Okay. Mayor and Commission, we, we would, uh, I believe, have a public hearing scheduled. We can certainly uh, take comments here this evening. Uh, it's, it's your option, but we would definitely schedule a public hearing as well. I'll retract my motion. <laughs> Is there anyone that would like to address the Commission on this issue? My name is Paul Jenkins, president of Grover Tone. Uh, under the uh, strategic plan which you just adopted, one of the areas of concern was that uh, the 
what's called the Raton Economic Development Board, consisted solely of city employees. And I think it's important to take a look at uh, what the process is. This ordinance comes into play when a potential economic development project is going to be seeking assistance. There's going to be a lot of dialogue that's already gone on in terms of what's available in terms of electricity, utility, water. At this point that the ordinance comes into play, they're seeking specific incentives from the city. And uh, we feel that it would be to the advantage of uh, the betterment of everyone if there were more uh, city-wide uh, input in that process. Now, uh, you, the adoption of a uh, specific project requires an ordinance in and of itself, so there is a point uh, in the process where uh, public hearings would be held. But we're talking about the very beginning of that process and not at the very beginning of the economic development process. Uh, I think at some point in time we want to uh, show the community that uh, this is not just an action that's being considered by the uh, city administration, but that they're being asked to comment on how they feel it uh, fits into the overall plan. And so that was the recommendation of the group that put together the strategic plan. Uh, we don't have any specifics in our plan as far as who should be members of, of that uh, Raton Economic Development Board. However, uh, we feel that some representation from the community would be appropriate. Is there anyone else that would like to address the commission on this particular subject? Okay. Questions? Other questions? It's my understanding this is the introduction to the ordinance, but it's it can be tweaked. It's not cast in stone. I, I think that we do want to have a process here of, mm -hmm. of, of having all stakeholders review what we have here. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, absolutely, I, I uh, will make sure that this is, th this goes out to the stakeholders that we identify, uh, that we know about Main Street certainly, uh, the chamber. Uh, if, if we or if somebody would like to look at it and and we don't get it to them, certainly we we want to talk to them. We right. want to Request. get this out there. Okay. I think we have a chance to have a lot of conversation on this before, you know, we take any final action here. that answer your question yes all right so this is the first introduction and those of you that do not have copies uh, if you do not receive one please request one <coughs> our next item of business is deliberate and act on appointment of board members to the city of Raton board which have vacancy uh, the first one is planning and zoning there are two vacancies, and I believe one applicant. Is there one or two? Just one. Just one. All right. Madam Mayor, I make a motion that we accept the Planning and Zoning Board uh, application of Kevin R. Nolan. Okay. I'll second that. We have a motion and a second to accept the uh, application of Kevin Nolan to the Planning and Zoning Commission. Is there any discussion? Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Madam. Yes. Mayor, I board. Okay. Oh, no, sir. No. <laughs> we have uh, one application for the library board and one vacancy, and our applicant is Ron Schuster. I'll make a motion to appoint uh, Ron Schuster to the vacancy of the library board. Okay. Second. Second. We have a motion and a second 
to approve the application of Ron Schuster to the library board. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Ron has been appointed. Park and Recreation Board. We have three vacancies, but we, have, we don't have any applicants, right? No, we don't. We only received those two. Okay. I would comment, Mayor and Commission, that uh, you know we, the city of Raton relies on people to step up and serve on these boards and commissions. We do have uh, a number of openings. We'll have more openings as we go forward. So we would encourage if someone has a particular interest in any board or commission, just uh, you know come in and, and fill out an application. We have it on file, and then when the vacancy comes up, we're able to bring it to the commission. Okay. Public hearing, deliberate, and act on resolution 2015-12, planning and zoning recommendations to commission for rezoning property at 1501 Trenisa Road from RHZ to R4. Mayor and Commission, what we are talking about here is a 0.31 acre tract that uh, was annexed into the city of Raton. Uh, previously it was uh, uh, located in the county and typically you would see a zoning designation of rural holding zone uh, in the county. But a rural holding zone designation is uh, typically applies to ranch land, pasture land, and uh, we would see how that property was gonna develop but as it develops, we really need to determine that it's going to be uh, developed as and zoned as residential, commercial, or industrial. Now, when you see uh, an R1, an R4, or an R5, those are residential. The usages are, the, are similar, uh, but we're really talking about the difference in those designations would be density. So an R1 would uh, allow a larger lot, an R5, uh, the minimum lot size would be smaller, so we would be in a denser area. So an R4 designation is typical in a, in a residential area. Um, now, the, the property was annexed to the city, but that did not change the zoning. So uh, the zoning uh, is rural holding zone, and as implied, it is kind of a holding designation and the proposal has gone before the Planning and Zoning Commission, now comes to the City Commission uh, at the request of the staff, myself specifically, because we need to determine now it's not ranch land, it's not pasture land, it's not appropriate to, to leave a spot zone of a rural holding zone in the city boundary. So we're recommending, and that's my recommendation, staff recommendation, that we rezone it to rural, uh, to uh, an R4 residential designation. Now, uh, really, you see that, uh, and, and we've included several maps in your packet, and hopefully we've done an adequate job of, of telling you where this is located and, and the character of the neighborhood. But uh, if you look at the property ownership map, you can see that uh, those properties that are on the west side of this or to your left as you're looking at the map or above it, that's all zoned R4. So one th thing in the zoning, we do not want to create a spot zone, uh, so it would be contiguous with R4. It looks like it's the obvious uh, correct choice. We did uh, go to Planning and Zoning Commission at the last meeting, held a, a public hearing there, uh, and the recommendation to the commission from the Planning and Zoning Commission was unanimous to rezone this tract to R4. So it matches the rest of it. Now I would emphasize this is not done at the request of a, of a property owner or a developer. This is a request of the city manager to uh, really clean up that present spot zone. So anyone that would like to address the commission on this issue? Madam Mayor, make a, res uh, make a resolution. <laughs> I'll make a motion that we adopt resolution number 2015-12, amending the official zoning map of the city of Raton by changing the tract of land located at 1501 Tranessa Road from RHZ to R4. I'll second that. We have a motion and a second 
to change the zoning uh, from RHZ to R-4, the property at 1501 Trunisa Road. Uh, can we have a roll call vote, please? Mm -hmm. Mayor Pro Tem Sagata? Yes. Commissioner Schuster? Yes. Commissioner Giacomo? Yes. Commissioner Chavez? Yes. Mayor Mance? Yes. Motion passes. Report. Uh, thank you, Mayor and Commission. We have a very brief report tonight because I didn't anticipate a longer meeting, and I'm really sorry to disappoint you that it's not longer than it was, but uh, we'll be kind of brief here. I <coughs> report to you that uh, uh, Tricia here has uh, gone to training during the last week, and it's uh, training regarding uh, registration, licenses, lodgers, tax, and uh, uh, liquor uh, as it applies to the city clerk. Um, I would also note to you that uh, Tricia has been in contact with uh, the, the state uh, alcohol people as far as our governmental uh, liquor license that would uh, pertain to the convention center, and that's moving along. Uh, we're, we're still kind of learning some about the process, but we hope to wrap that up uh, pretty soon so that when scheduled events come up later in the year, mm -hmm. we're, we're set for that, so we, we think that it's on track. Um, I would tell you that uh, Public Works Crew has been uh, working on uh, pothole patching as we've talked about, uh, some drainage improvements as we talked about, but we've put a lot of uh, work and effort into some improvements at our solid waste facilities. Uh, specifically, uh, we've been working on fencing improvements at the old uh, landfill and doing some general cleanup uh, in that area. Uh, I think last time, at the last meeting, we said that there were uh, there was some uh, recoding, some polyurethane coating going on at the uh, floor of the convention center, that wood gym floor. That's complete now. It's had time to cure, so uh, we're ready to host events there again. We have asked users uh, to uh, be friendly to the floor, so like some of the uh, the mats that we use, some of the activities, we'll try to move those downstairs uh, to, to uh, not scuff up the floor uh, immediately. But if you get a chance to look at that, it looks looks great, and I think we're ready to go for a while. Um, we all did attend the, uh, the uh, district meeting at the Municipal League in Las Vegas last week, so that did give you all a chance to, to hear from the Municipal League about what came out of the, the legislative session. And I guess the bottom line was that uh, uh, no capital outlay and a lot of bills didn't make it through or subsequently got vetoed. So we got that, uh, that report from the Municipal League. Um, I intend to be gone uh, uh, the 22nd and 23rd. Uh, we have uh, some some business in Albuquerque, and uh, um, the Municipal League, the self-insurers, will be conducting their mandatory training, and that's uh, I'll, I'll attend that. It's an eight-hour session on the 23rd. Uh, we'll talk about our uh, dividend uh, for for our insurance mm -hmm. students working as comp, and I'll bring that information back to you uh, at the next meeting. Uh, and then I have one last item where I did get uh, a uh, letter here from DOT, and uh, I would tell you that uh, Jared Chatterley and Jason Phillips had worked on uh, together a, a grant application through the uh, Recreational Trails Program, and let me read from the letter. Uh, it's from Tamara Haas, the Director of Asset Management Planning Division of New Mexico DOT. She says, it's my pleasure to inform you that New Mexico DOT has selected the City of Raton to receive a Recreational Trails uh, Program funding award for the project Roundhouse Park Trail Maintenance. Uh, the project award is for fiscal year 2017. Um, so what she's telling us is that the, the uh, the match actually comes from a federal program, uh, I mean the, the, the grant funds from a federal program, and uh, they're giving us $42,720. They're asking for a local match of $7,280, total project $50,000. Now, if, uh, a lot of people use the walking trails in the area of the, the aquatic center, and uh, because there's really not that tire traffic on it, 
that those trails age a little differently than what we would see on, on streets. So uh, we have cracking going on there and we have uh, kind of the weathering oxidation of that asphalt. So this $50,000 would be to, uh, to resurface those resurface. trails and try to control the cracking. So like I say, at uh, uh, fiscal year 2017, we've got a, a while to work on this mm -hmm. uh, and, and that $7,280 matches required. That's all I have there. Okay, thank you. We had put on the agenda a closed executive session pursuant to NMSA 10-15 uh, litigation, but um, our attorneys on this particular item uh, requested that we not go into the executive session until our next meeting. So is there any other business to come before the commission? Seeing none, meeting adjourned.